I thank you for our time together with you. Lord, though we walk alone, when we are made conformable into the image of Christ, it's a very lonely road. Because he was a heavenly man. He was the heavenly man. He was the second Adam. He was a life giver, a life bearer, a life bringer, a resurrected from the dead. It's a lonely road, Jesus. But it's your road. If you walked it, so will we. If all we have left is breath in our lungs, let us use it to praise you. Now, Holy Spirit, I bring you my nothing. I am nothing. We are nothing. But Jesus, you are everything. I walk in fear and trembling with the words you've given me to deliver to your people. God, I take it very seriously what you've given me. Help me, oh Lord. Bring me to your servants in due season. <laughs> because I don't know how else to do it. God, these are your words. And I trust you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go to 2 Corinthians 1. So I'm going to be jumping around in 2 Corinthians. Uh, so the Lord gave a word uh, you'll find this in 2 Corinthians he, Paul was quoting Psalms 2 Corinthians 5.13 and since we have the same spirit of faith in keeping with what is written I believe therefore I spoke we also believe and therefore we speak Guys, I share, I share this with you. Um, Second Corinthians. Corinthians one. What I quoted was Second Corinthians four verse thirteen. So, what this message is about? It's actually going to be a couple of parts. Uh, what the Lord has been showing. Uh, the message is called, you know, it's what the Lord is trying to communicate. The God of all comfort. The God of all comfort. God of all comfort, that's right. Oh, that's no. Who in here loves people? Who in here really loves people as God would have them? Yeah, I, I'm guilty. Who I, is I can't. I can't do it. I'm not ready to do it. I'm not able to do it. Nobody. We are, we are not capable in and of ourselves to, to, to do that. We don't have the necessary training. We don't have the equipping. Who believes the Holy Spirit's your teacher? He is your teacher. When I was in the apprenticeship program, yeah, you had, you worked full time, and just one day, two days a month, you go to classes. And, uh, and they would show you everything. If you paid attention, you would understand. Uh, it's more than just learning the trade. When Jesus had his disciples, it was said, of all the rabbis, whoever was trained under them, that they would lick the dust of their master. If Jesus yeah. rose up, they rose up with him. If he sat down, they sat down with him. If he was going to eat, he ate with them. If he went to bed, they slept with him. Everywhere he went, they were like a bunch of little ducks in, 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 in a line. That's, that's what they were. And as a result, 
they did as the master did. Jesus said himself, it is enough that a servant be like his master. So, what I've, what I've been sensing, uh, last week I was going to talk about the fear of God. And I did, but I talked to our family. What's amazing is that the Holy Spirit, and Jen and Ramon, you guys can testify to this. That's the me- that was the message you guys got for that week, and we didn't even talk. Amen? Mm-hmm. So, uh, so the God of all comfort. Okay, so Second Corinthians one, verse, starting in verse three. Uh, so what I'm attempting to communicate: we, as Christians, as believers, as little Jesuses. That's why they were called Christians. Because, because of the great love, they had one for each other. Because they looked like Jesus. Because they were with Jesus. Because they mimicked Jesus. Because they were as if they were Jesus. Right there. He says, greater things you'll do because I'm gone. What's that greaterness? That, that greatness. That's the Holy Spirit communicated to all believers. That's the Holy Spirit. Jesus in the presence, in the capacity as the Holy Spirit in us. When it says we regard him no longer, he is physically in the heavens. But at the same time, don't even try to figure it out. That's, this is the mystery of, 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 this is the mystery of all mysteries. We will have perfect knowledge when we are in his presence. When the whole, but as a matter of faith, believe it, because his word said it. I am in you. It is not I, but Christ, Messiah, Jesus, lives in me. And as such, we need to live like that. And I'm sure you guys are thinking, Eris, how does that happen? Well, you can't, there is an instant download, but by the same token, you got to walk it out. How? Obey. That's where it starts conform to that image. How? Walk. Do. There is a, yes, you're transformed. But then there's a progression. It is, in in many theological doctrines, they call it now and not yet principle. A present and progressive. you'll, You'll probably hear that. How long does it take for a person to be saved? A moment in a lifetime. Okay? How long does it take a person to be sanctified? A moment in a lifetime. How long does it take a person to be, go into glory? A moment in a lifetime. How long does it take a person to be seated in the heavenly places? We are seated, but we are not in full realization. We are walking out that story day by day. How do we learn to conform to the image of Christ? Guys, I'm going to tell you some hard things. And I've been told, and, and, and I love my dear brother who, who shared this with me, and it's fine, I don't care. He said, you're an evangelistic threshing slave. I'd rather you just walk away, get angry at me, and I see you at the gates. And the statement was, you're an evangelistic threshing slave. I'm sorry, guys, suck it up. I'm speaking to myself because I had that all week. We are in a sin-cursed world. We are here. How can we be ready to be God's ministers of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians, or 1 Corinthians, one of the two, as well as the representatives as comforting those in afflictions, the God of all comfort. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I'll share this now, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. He, he comforts us in all our affliction. Or, there's a footnote, trouble, tribulation, trials, oppression. The Greek word has a literal meaning of being under pressure. Um, if anybody has that King James word, I want to I say it's the ellipsis. I'm not sure. Um, 
so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction through the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Hold on to that thought. For as the... For as the sufferings of Christ overflow to us, so through Christ our comfort also overflows. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which is experienced in your endurance of the same sufferings that we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that as you share in the sufferings, you will also share in the comfort. Uh, who of you came from an addict background, drugs or compulsive behavior? Okay. Now, those of you in the attic background, how well can you identify those with those who are still in that addiction background? For, uh, okay. Some of, okay, so I came from a compulsive addiction background. I don't understand the substance abuse other than alcohol. The substance abuse um, cycle of addiction. But I understand the compulsive behavior. We do suffer for sin for those of us with messed up past. But by the same token, those of us in current afflictions. So as a believer, okay, who has had trials and tribulations beyond understanding? You felt like no Christian understood you, and you were a believer. As believers, I mean, I mean, serious afflictions like I don't know, family issues, child issues. You're praying to God, and it seems like God doesn't answer. It should be every one of us. Yes. It should be every one of us. Get used to it. God is conforming you to look like Jesus. Stop complaining in your suffering. Stop it. Thank Him for it. Because in your suffering, you are looking conformable to Jesus Christ, who is our beauty. How can you look at, how can you reach out to a world that is dying if you don't look like Jesus? And that process hurts. And it hurts. And there are times you are selfish. There are times you can't take it anymore. You're like, I don't want to pray anymore. And God said, oh, my child. And you can't look like Jesus with everything like this in the way. I got to get this out. Who do you think you are? Do you think you can... Create everything and set the sea at its limit to put a hook in Leviathan's mouth? Yeah, Who do you think you are? Please. Because on the back side, you can reach set with imaginary pierced arms, pierced feet, crown on your brow, and pick up the downtrodden and say, There is someone who cares. Let me comfort you. You can't comfort the next person. You're doing it in your flesh. Don't even try. Don't even attempt to reach out unless you've suffered as well. There is hope. I mean, this is, this is the God of all comfort. And it's like, whoa. What are you telling me? Yeah. Being conformable even unto death. Who in here knows who Richard Wormbrand is? Voice of the Martyrs, he started it. He was 14 years in a Romanian prison. Didn't know that his wife was alive. They told he was under communist Romania. They beat the snot out of him. And he was there. He says, I'm a lucky fellow. And he came from a Jewish background, but Jesus, you know, he was a pastor. He came to Jesus. He, he wrote, Tortured for Christ. You can get it for free on Voice of the Martyrs. And he said uh, there's some people that have been in jail 41 years one guy 43 years died in prison 84 years old in uh, Albania
And uh, when he was in one, when he was in prison in Romania, at, at one point he was complaining. He said, "Lord, what's the deal?" And the Lord didn't give him a comforting word, didn't do anything, but he said, "What's your name?" Okay, that's such like a dumb question. What's your name? God of all the universe says, "What's your name?" And he was thinking of of a for, of a martyr by the name of Richard, who was getting ready to be hanged. And the hangman was having problems with the noose. And the, and, and, and the Christian, and uh, Richard, this in this story, was uh, a farmer, but he could work not. He says, Mr. Hangman, can I be of assistance? He's getting ready to, to get hanged. And he says, I have no grudge against you. I love you. I know you're doing your job. And I just, I just want to bless you. And, and here, let me help you. And he went home to be with Jesus after that. He was hanged. And Richard Wormbrun said to the Lord, My Lord, I'm not worthy to be called by my name after this martyr. I am nothing. That's what Philippians 3 says. We, we always forget, be, 310, being conformed to his death, assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from the dead. Who in here, I don't want hands, take this line back to the Lord in your secret place, can honestly say, for me to live as Christ and die in this game, is it really your heart's aim to live Jesus? And be willing for your very emotions, your very will, your very intellect, the way things happen, for it to die. The very part of you that makes you who you are, to say, not I, but Christ. Unless you're ready to do that. Unfortunately, very hard work. The sufferings of Christ must overflow to you so that Christ, your comfort, will also overflow. If we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. You can honestly say to the next person, you know, I don't know what you're going through, but I know the one who does. You can say that. There is a connection when you are suffering, when you are afflicted, when you can reach out. And it's not wrong to say, I'm sorry, I don't know how to help you, but I know the one who will help you. Absolutely, that should be our, our phrase. By the same token, we know that if our temporary earthly dwelling is destroyed, we have a building from God and eternal dwelling. What you're going through now is momentary. I mean, literally a blink of an eye. Sadly, guys, I'm going to um, also give another warning. I don't know if it's a warning. A call. As you're being conformable to the image of Christ, guys, you're going to be separated. You will be separated. Leanne had a dream many years ago about a blue and a brown community. An earthly community and a heavenly one. One that does things according to hierarchy, oppression, and a total misunderstanding. Versus one that is about love, community, fellowship, service, Humility. That's the blue community. Go to 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14. Dad, I tried to go to the Bible. Okay. Or 
Verse 14. 14. Do not be mismatched with unbelievers. For what partnership is there between righteousness and lawlessness? What fellowship does light have with darkness? What agreement does Christ have with Belial? Belial also means worthlessness, worthless men. It also means the devil. Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? And what agreement does God's sanctuary have with idols? For we are the sanctuary of the living God. As God said, I will dwell among them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch any unclean thing and I will welcome you. I will be a father to you and you will be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, dear friends, since we have such promises, let us cleanse ourselves from every impurity of the flesh. I never caught this till now. And spirit, completing our sanctification in the fear of God. It means your emotions too. Your will, the way you think. Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed. We have friends in, in different countries that they struggle whether or not they're going to eat the next day. We suffer here mental anguish. Other countries don't, from what I've read, what I've been told, they don't have issues of depression. They don't have issues of... They have rejection, but it, they also get physical beatings with it too. Sadly, in this country, we've given too much credit to family relationships. We put the cart before the horse. Uh, we have elevated community over oneness with Jesus. And we don't call out sin to be sin. We're willing to join in their love feast and end up in a compromising Moab situation like the children of Israel did until someone like Phinehas, mouth of brass, slew an Israelite in a, in a um, Moabitess. Apparently she was in leadership. You can read it in Numbers 24, I believe, or 25. We partner too much with the world. We get... We feel bad for people, but yet we don't call out sin to be sin. We don't say, look, this is wrong. We're not willing to face rejection. We're not willing to face loneliness and abandonment. Here in this country, we want to all join together. This nation, as great as it is and as godly of an origin it has, we've elevated the very blessings that God has given us as God himself. And sadly, we've put the cart before the horse. Enough. Enough. Stop having friends. Our friendship is in Christ. What a friend we have in Jesus. It's time to make a stand and be willing. Guys, I'm... The Lord was giving a word this past week. Get out from among them. Be separate. Now those who are worldly in the world, I mean, I'm not saying get out of the world. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying disconnect. I'm not saying go be a separatist. What I am saying, be out there. Definitely. Preach. Share the gospel. Share about Jesus. And if things are evil and wicked, why should you laugh at what they laugh at? Why should you... Be part of a trifle of a conversation. What is it going to benefit you? Is it building you up? If it's not, run. Just get out of there. Or speak. Say, hey, that's gossip. Please stop. And if they like, hey, you know, no, we're just having a little fun. I don't appreciate that. I'm sorry. If they say, well, 
Okay. Why aren't you willing to suffer rejection? Why are we afraid of losing friends? Why are we afraid of being alone? Why? If God is for us, who can be against us? Why are we afraid to lose our lives if Jesus lost his so that we may gain eternity? There's nothing for us here. Those who call themselves as believers, guys, we have a greater obligation to them. If they're doing wrong and you know it, seek the Lord as to what you ought to share with them. It's hard. Trust me, it's hard to tell someone you love family members that you've had a relationship with to turn around and say, guys, I love you. And to point out, God showed me there's sin in the camp. Sin in your camp. Please repent. You can't go on living like this. Assuming that you, you have this insight, this, this understanding, this knowledge. Remember, you're not judging. You're attempting to save. Jesus came attempting to save. We ought to do the same. And if they say, you're judging me, Jesus says, I come not to judge. And guess what? That should be your phrase too. Look, I'm not judging you. I'm being obedient. It's not about, hey, you're drinking too much. Guys, this takes discernment. You can't just walk up to people and just say these things. All of these are assuming that you're abiding in Christ. If you're not abiding in him, get back to the closet. Get back to the closet. Because when he gives that bony finger, when he gives that fire, you better walk out with a thus saith the Lord. And I'm not speaking on my own behalf, but I'm only speaking of him who sent me. This takes faith. This takes surety. Be separate. We are to be a holy bride. Which doesn't mean stay away from the government. I'm not saying any of that. No. Jesus even said this is not, we don't live for here. He says my kingdom is not of this world. If they were, my followers would overthrow you right now. But it's not. We focus too much on blaming everybody else. Blame yourself first. In a sense of not condemn yourself, but Lord, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6, before that, we have sought to be open before you. Hide nothing. Lord, search me. Burn me up. Let other believers speak into your life. And if they say, look, I'm, I'm noticing that you're full of pride. Thank you so much for speaking those words to me. Receive it. And bring it before the Father. Lord, this is what was told to me. And I give it to you. And if you don't confess for yourself and, 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 and there's this clean slate, confess for your brothers and sisters who have not, who don't know to confess. Is that not what Nehemiah and Ezra did? Confessing the sins of the people? And if they refuse to confess, who's going to stand in the gap? That's what makes us different. Jesus is our great intercessor. I believe, therefore, I spoke. If the Father speaking to you what he just gave me to share, you're welcome to give a testimony, share. Camera's just going to be here. Um, if there's some word of testimony, encouragement or of reproof please feel free to share you know I would I would I would like to, to testify of the wholeness of God 
and, and which um, word um, that was brought for, forth through the scriptures that you read, I would, I would, um, would like to testify that, you know, uh, God has been dealing with me in that matter um, to separate myself from those uh, people who uh, confess with their mouth but don't believe in the power thereof. Um, it, it's been, it's really, it really hurts me to understand who these people are. It, it hurts, it, you know, to be before, you know, believers, you know, that I, I love and have love for, it's, it's hard, it, it really is, you know. Um, you know, the truth, the truth, the, the, the truth that God said he will bring will only come through the power of the Holy Ghost. I've, I've been in contact with people this week and, you know, they confess to have a gift and when they talk to me, they talk about the things of this world what the government has to offer, what the government is doing with their money. And it hurts me. It, it really hurts because that's that's not the God we serve. I don't know who they've been serving. I don't know what they've been serving, but that's not Jesus. It, you know, it, it really hurts me to, to go and talk to these elder people and, you know, I listen before I speak and say anything, but none of it attach or has any agreement with the ghost at all. It's, it's head knowledge and it's flesh. Speaking of the, the miserable things that this, they're allowing this world to, to bring them through, but God has overcome all of these things. We're, we're, we're putting our hands to the plow for the things of this world. All of that. I believe that I've received, and I, I thank God for whichever individual, who these individuals are, I believe it came from God. I, I believe it came from God. It didn't come from any um, anybody that doesn't understand the word of God until its fullness, because it speaks and it changes the way they view, the way they live, the way they used to see things. And, and I testify to that brother that the scripture that you read, be not conformed to this world. You know, because this is not this is not us. Be in this, be ye in it, but not of it. So fighting these hours, trying to be up with the Joneses and and, and trying to have all these elaborate things is not, that's idol tree, that's idolatry. That's how you're idolizing things, stuff. All our blessings and our gifts comes from the kingdom. It comes from the kingdom of God. God has touched hands for those who have spiritually faith, you know, from their ancestry, it's still in them. And, 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 and the hard work that they learned that they were obedient those hands will give because there is a faith through their ancestry that God has allowed to grow through them. And that's why they do the things that they do and without understanding. But again, what I've come to understand is we're speaking out of the flesh about the things of this world. These things of the world does not govern us. I, I can recall a scripture when they tried to trick Jesus, and they said, well, who do you pay your taxes to? And, to, and Jesus said, to Caesar, of course. But he was letting them know, to, to Caesar, of course, but I am higher than Caesar. In, in, in so many words, Caesar's nothing to me. Peter, go onto the river, and first fish you see, you grab that coin and give that tax money unto him. He doesn't govern me. He doesn't know who I am. He doesn't receive the words that I am. 
He doesn't receive the words that I am speaking. And, and, and so, again, the people, what, the message that you has brought to, 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 to us today is I can identify, I can confirm to that that, you know, we're, we're, we're living in a world where we're allowing the world to govern us. We are no longer governed by this world being children of God. We are no longer governed by this world being children of God. That separates us. That allows our true light of Christ to be shown. Because we're different. We're different. We are seen different. We're not connected to the things that they are. We're not concerned about the things that they are concerned with. Because we're different. Our light shows different than what the world would even ever be able to identify because that's when you talk about they think they're better than us. They think that they uh, have more than us. Or they think they do this because, no, because they are in darkness and have not ever seen the light. So they can identify the light. They'll never be able to identify the light until they come to Christ. And, 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 I, and, I, and, and, and I wholeheartedly understand that you know, uh, the things that we're dealing with every day in our everyday life, we have to, we have to be for each other. We, we have to continue to be for each other. Nobody should be able to break the body apart. Mm -hmm. Nobody should be able to come between the body. You know, brethren should be able to listen to brethren and, 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 and comfort one another Amen. in all their times and pray that and watch God move in that situation. He's going to move with those who believe the same thing. Not different. The same thing God will begin to move when it's the same Jesus. When it's the same thing. When it's the same and similar heart. And all one body in Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit. It, it's, that's when he begins to show up and move. So I, I, to this week I've, I've ran into people and they, they confess to be believers. But again, I've heard hearts crying. Their hearts are crying because they don't know traditionally. Mama and them said that I'm a Christian, but I don't want Trump to be in there. Or I'm a Christian and I don't want Joe Biden to be in there. And traditionally, they've been taught to connect to the things that has nothing to do with the body of Christ. Has nothing to do with the body of Christ. Nothing. That's of this world. That is not of the kingdom. That is not of the kingdom of God, that is of this world. We have no dealings of the things of this world. Because when we begin to deal with the things of this world, we begin to look on our flesh to take care of our situations. We begin to look on our feelings to handle our things emotionally or how we feel. That's not Jesus. That's not, that's not Jesus. We're connected to the world. And we begin to try to handle things ourselves. That's not the Father. That's us trying to do. We're moving him off the throne and placing ourselves on the throne with the things we're dealing with in this world. Traditionally, we've been taught. But we have to begin to cry out to know the truth. And the truth is he loves us. And we are to love our family, our children, as Christ loved us. And that's the only way we'll begin to live and see and be saw as Christ-like people. When you have hatred in your heart, when you're condemning people from their past, that is not of Christ. That is not, we're living in a world where everybody's trying to allow the world to separate Christians. I don't like religion. I don't like religion because religion tears people apart. Religion tears people down. Religion has no truth because all that truth is of this world. It's not of the kingdom. Only the ghosts will lead and guide those people to the things that are of Jesus Christ. Only the ghosts. Other than that, it's word say. It's all word say. Denominationalism has got to stop. Legalism, all those things, all those things that separates us. 
We need to pray for one another. That one may be healed through his anger. One may be healed through his sexual immorality. His, his lust. We have to pray. We have to fast and begin to move in that. Own that every day of our life. Every day. It hurts me to see people, older people out there like that. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know because people have taken the word of God and they've added to and they've taken away the power thereof. Father in heaven, we love you. Oh God, forgive us for every area where we have shirked our place in this world of conforming to your image. Father, we ask your forgiveness. Jesus, have mercy upon us where we have shirked our responsibility as Christians to be conformable unto you so that your life may burst forth from us. Forgive us where we have held back the alabaster flask of our heart. Father, I pray that you break it so that the fragrance may fully come out. Father, please continue drawing people out of taking your name falsely. Father, forgive us when we've done that too. Heal us, O Lord, and we shall be saved. In Jesus' name, amen.